And uh, for those that haven't been with us, we're doing a whole series that I'll walk you through. Today, we're going to talk more about AI. And uh, today's theme is going to be just because you can doesn't mean you should. So I'll explain what I mean. Uh, so for those that don't know me, my name is Dan Walleen. I, I work with our Cloud Developer Advocacy Group, and I'm excited to talk with you again. So let's jump right in here since I have limited time. So we're going to talk today about assisting users with AI, and this has been the theme for a bit. And we have five general sessions we're covering here. Um, today, we're going to talk about one that's a little more interesting, and I'll explain what I mean by that. And that is using Azure Open AI and GPT prompts to convert natural language to SQL. Now, I'm going to give a little story to, to start this. Uh, I, well, second job, I guess I had, had the opportunity to work with uh, DBA. His name was Lance. Uh, super, I owe a lot of my career to Lance because he walked me through all the security implications and how to get you know stored procedures and tables right in, in uh, SQL Server, things like that. So I spent many, many years working in the world of databases and then moved on to consulting and did it you know even more there. So the reason I mentioned that is some of you may be in that role where you're not only doing the development side, but you also have to handle maybe some of the database side and you know about some of the security implications. So what we're going to talk about here is what you could actually do with something like Azure OpenAI and use it to be more friendly to users, but there might be a few things you want to think through. So before I jump into the rest of that, let me walk you through what we're covering again. So we started off, and these are all recorded if you missed them, uh, with introducing the sample and the general concepts we're going to be talking about. Three general pillars. Uh, the first is AI communication, and then organizational data is the other one. So uh, last week, I went in to create an Azure OpenAI resource and deploy a model, showed how to use Azure OpenAI Studio and a few other things. Again, it's all recorded, so don't worry if you missed it. Uh, but today, we're going to cover this natural language to SQL. And then uh, the next two weeks are going to be some more on AI. And actually, my colleague, Aicha Bash, is going to help me out here, and she's going to be taking the next two weeks. Now, once we get through those, we're going to get into communication features. This will be Azure Communication Services, talk about adding phone calls, SMS messages, email, things like that to apps. And then we'll wrap up with bringing organizational data. This will all be with Microsoft Graph and Microsoft Graph Toolkit and some of the new things you can do specifically uh, with Microsoft Graph Toolkit. Now, I'm going to call this session, though, the just because you can doesn't mean you should session. And this is done on purpose. Um, the tutorial I'm going to point you to at the end today actually has this in it. So you could go through step by step. But as we talk through this today, we're going to talk through some of the, uh, I, how should I put it, dangers, I guess, that you should really think through before you jump into something like this. Now, let me uh, move back over here to the app. And for those that haven't seen the app before, it's a really simple line of business app with the data grid, does have some security with login, has multiple AI features, uh, communication features, like I can actually call phone numbers from the app, send SMS messages, things like that. But today, we're going to talk about this good old data grid. I mean, who doesn't have a data grid in their uh, you know, app at some point? Um, Check out the customer query here. Get the total revenue for all orders, group by company, and include the city. Okay, well, let's go ahead and run that. Now, before I hit the button, I wanna mention that this is a Postgres SQL database. So it's a relational database, and it only has a few tables. So this is a demo. <laughs> this is not ready for production, and we're gonna talk through some of the gotchas here, which is the whole purpose of this. So it generally has uh, customers, orders, and reviews, three main tables. And I'll show you how that works coming up. So when I run this, we're actually going to use Azure OpenAI to translate this sentence or sentences into dynamic SQL. Now, that should ring some uh, warning bells for some of you. At least I hope it does. Uh, but we are accounting for quite a bit, and I'll, I'll talk about that. But... This is one of those opportunities that you look at it and you go, oh, my users would love that. Like, that's amazing. 
And then if you don't have that background in, you know, securing databases and queries and things like that, that's when you may might be walking down the uh, danger zone if you've seen Top Gun, the movie. But anyway, so here's an example of what it just did. So let me uh, reset the data. I'll run it again. And there you go. And as you can see, it's, it's pretty fast, actually. None of that was cached. Now let's do um, get all reviews from companies in, let's see, we have New York, Austin, Sydney, London, you'll see right here. Let's do London. Let's see what that does. <clears throat> and uh, all right, that it worked, but let's say uh, include the company name. Let's go ahead and run that. All right, that's a little better. Now we have the company, uh, the review, it's a one through five scale, those type of things, date, comment, things like that. Now, there's a lot more we could do on this, but what I want to show you and spend the rest of the time on is what's going on and some of the gotchas and the just because you can doesn't mean you should. All right, so let's jump into that. So first off, you'll notice down here at the bottom of my uh, UI, I have the console open in VS Code, and these are the actual queries that are being returned from Azure OpenAI. And you could use this with OpenAI too, by the way. Um, so select uh, c.company uh, r.star from cu uh, customers, enter join the reviews, where city. Now this is good though. So we're doing parameterized queries. Okay, so that can get rid of our SQL injection type attacks. That's the first thing you'd have to worry about here. Um, and then it looks like we have a very similar one right down here. And if I scroll up, you'll see some of the others. Uh, let's see, that's the reviews one. Yeah, here we go. Uh, select the company city, the order total from the revenue, uh, enter join on orders, group by company and city. Okay, so pretty standard SQL queries, right? Now, let's talk about the just because you can doesn't mean you should, though. So the first thing is, this is the, the function, this is the API that's being called. So the client side sends that data that you saw right here, down in the text box, and it sends that up to an API. In this case, it's a TypeScript API, but um, we're also gonna have uh, C Sharp and Python pretty soon. But you'll notice this gets SQL from NLP, Natural Language Processing is what that stands for. Now, what this does is it reads from a schema, and this is a very high level schema, actually. This is it right here. You could certainly go way more detailed, but this basically is on the server side, making it aware of what are the tables, what are the columns, and those type of things, okay? Now, obviously, this is not something you'd ever wanna share outside of a secured environment, okay? So this would stay on the API side. That we can take care of easily. Now, moving on down, though, we have two prompts here. So what we're gonna do is we have what the user wants to do, but we need to set up some ground rules. And we're gonna do that through this system prompt, it's called. Now the system prompt, think of that as all the rules that OpenAI needs to follow in order to get back the data that we would like to get. So notice it's a natural language to SQL bot that returns only a JSON object um, and the parameter values in it. And the SQL is gonna be against a Postgres database. And then we say, here is the schema. And we embed that schema in there. Now this is kind of gotcha number one. With Azure OpenAI, all right, you have all the security, all the uh, responsible AI rules around this, the guarantees that we provide. With some of the others out there, you don't. So you would be sending that schema up and it could be used for training. All right, it would not be in this case because this is Azure OpenAI. But I do want to point that out. You have to be careful as you send prompts up, whatever you're using, because there's a lot of open source models out there that can be used now. There's obviously uh, the Azure OpenAI and others. Are they using your data for training purposes? So that's something you'll always have to ask, especially in business scenarios like this. Now, in this case, we're okay um, because I am using Azure OpenAI. Now, some of my rules convert any strings to a Postgres parameterized query. Okay, that's good. That can invent, uh, prevent SQL injection attacks. All right, and if you're not familiar with those, there's a lot of hacks you can do, bad things, to, uh, I, I don't know, drop databases, drop tables, things like that. If people embed actual strings into a SQL query, 
and then execute it dynamically. Now, those of you that work a lot with databases, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But if you haven't, definitely something to look into. Look into SQL injection attacks. Not a good thing. Um, so this prevents the this prevents that type of thing with the parameterized query. And you saw that earlier. If we go back down to here, let's go to the bottom and right here. So you'll notice that dollar one, and then we're passing this in. So the database will take care of that in this case. Okay, now let's move on though, because there's more things you need to worry about. Now we give it a couple, and we in this case we call it uh, one shot or multi shot, a uh, few shot. These are samples of what it might look for. So display all company reviews group by company. Well, this is what we want the assistant to actually return uh, back to us. Okay, so notice we have a SQL in the JSON SQL property, and then we have a param values. Well, again, that matches, let's go back to here, with what you see right here, all right? This is the actual raw SQL that Azure OpenAI returned. So we have the SQL property, there's our SQL query, and then we have the params values, which is an array of the parameters that would be substituted in. Okay, so move on to the next part. So we have a couple samples here. We say convert any strings to parameterized query. Now, didn't we just say that? I'm pretty sure we did. <laughs> right here. Okay, there is the concept of most recent bias when you work with prompting in AI. And in really, really important rules that you want to follow, it is common that you might actually list those at the beginning and then list those again towards the bottom of your prompt. And the reason for that is depending on the models that are being used, they could be trained on you know a lot of data out there. And by kind of reminding them, last thing here, convert any strings to Postgres parameterized queries, it's a good way to make sure it's like top of mind as the model does its work. So something to think about um, as you go through this. Now, you'll notice another one, do not include any text outside of the JSON object. Well, guess what happens occasionally? Occasionally, I won't get back this raw JSON, and that can really mess you up if you're looking for raw JSON and then parsing that. So I actually have some extra post-processing code because sometimes it will say, here's your SQL query, and then it'll embed the JSON. Well, the here's your SQL query is not a good thing <laughs> because if you take that as that's what I need and then you try to do a JSON parse on it, not gonna work. So you're gonna have to worry about that. And that's another kind of gotcha with really any AI model out there is make sure you double check the data that you're getting back. All right, and then from there, what we're doing is we call OpenAI, and this is just a fetch call. We pass in this prompt that you see here, and we also pass in what the user typed, and of course, that is what you see right here. Okay, so, so far we have this system prompt, we have a user prompt, we're gonna send all those up with these rules. Is that enough? I mean, we have parameterized queries, right? No, still not enough. Um, a lot of security implications to think about. If for those of you that deal with stored procedures, for example, or just procedures in some databases, we can lock those down to certain groups, if you will. Now we have to kind of run this as permissions that the app has, not nearly as granular, or we could run them as permissions of the user. Okay, that would be more granular. That is not built in here. So that is absolutely another thing you would need to think about because what if they try a query that most users are allowed to get to this table, let's call it table X, but not all users, all right? We need security for that, of course. So some more things to think about. Now, what I do once we get the data back is uh, we go through and the OpenAI will actually extract the JSON. So it'll make sure there's no other text and extract it. And if it can't, then it'll return an empty object. We then parse those JSON results. And then notice what I'm doing here though, all right? Is prohibited query. Could I come in and do this? Drop table customers, all right? Something like that. Well, yeah, I could. Now, hopefully the security would not be allowed to even allow that to run, but yeah, it's a possibility. Notice I get prohibited query here. And again, this is the just because you can, doesn't mean you should. 
you're really going to have to think through. This is a really simple thing I did. I just threw in a bunch of keywords that I would never want in this case. And you can see an example here of those. And then I check, does what the user typed have any of these keywords? All right. Now, is that enough? I'm going to argue no. <laughs> um, there's still even more thought that would need to go into this. But I'm out of time. I'm going to move on here. So I want to wrap up with, again, just because you can doesn't mean you should. That's a super cool feature. It's also a feature you would really, really have to think through. And that's the whole emphasis. And that is going to set us up for the next couple of weeks of AI, where we're going to talk about some, some scenarios that aren't generating dynamic SQL, not nearly as dangerous as that. Um, but to wrap up, if you want to learn about some of the some of the other areas you might want to think about from the security to what we call post-processing, that's uh, checking for banned keywords, for example, and the list goes on and on and on, then you can check out this tutorial. Uh, if you scan this code or you can go to this link right here, this will give you some insights into that. And it's actually going to walk you through not only setting up the Azure Open AI, but also it'll walk you through that exact demo that I just ran with all the caveats of just because you can doesn't mean you should. And I'll leave you with that. And uh, next week, Aichi is going to be here for the next two times on AI. So I uh, look forward to that. With that, uh, Vesa, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you.